Because we live in a townhome, storage space is really hard to come by. In the shop slash garage, we've used these shelves to store odds and ends, but it's time to come up with a more efficient method. I'll be hanging these totes from the roof of the garage where they will be out of the way but can be easily accessed. At first, I need to make sure these will fit hanging from the roof without impeding the garage door from opening. With installing the runners that I'll make, I should have about an inch and a half of clearance. Now, should is the key word here. I'm using leftover plywood and pine wood for this build, so really the only cost to me was the price of the totes. I started by cutting down the half inch plywood to about three inches wide. These will be the horizontal pieces that actually attach to the roof. Then I cut down some three quarter inch plywood to about four inches wide, which will be the horizontal runners that will actually make contact with the totes ledge, allowing them to hang. Then I trimmed them to the length of the totes, which was about 30 inches. I need to make sure that I allow the totes plenty of space between the two boards so that they slide in and out easily, but not so much space that they hang so low and prevent the garage door from opening. I used my digital caliper and my trusty tapulator app to give me the right measurements for the vertical boards. If you have never used the tapulator app, I highly recommend it. I'll add a link to it in the description below. Once I had the measurement, I cut the pine wood pieces down to the right width. Again, I just used some old pieces of scrap pine that I had laying around. After that, I lined the plywood pieces up and marked center on them so I could line them up with the center of the vertical boards. I assembled them with glue and one and a half inch screws. I first added a bead of glue to the pine board, then I lined up the top of the plywood piece and set it with a couple brad nails. Then I countersunk and drilled the screws. Pretty easy. One of the greatest purchases though for my shop was the purchase of this Rockler Insta Drive set. It allows you to drill a countersink hole and then switch to a drill bit and drive the screw without having to switch anything out of your drill chuck. This makes repetitive workflow like this so much easier. It also comes with a bunch of self-centering drill bits and a bunch of different countersink bits. I'll leave a link to it in the description below just in case you're interested. It's a great thing to have around the shop. Once I was done with one side, I just flipped the thing over and did the same thing with a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Once that's done, I had a nice looking runner for the totes to slide onto. And then I just repeated the same process with the other four runners I made. If you found this video helpful, make sure you go give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. We love to have you as part of the Poor Men's Workshop team. Once I was done, I placed two of the runners on one of the totes to measure the exact distance that they need for the totes to slide onto the runners. Then I cut a scrap piece of plywood to use as a reference as I attached them to the ceiling. Now it's time to get these puppies installed. Making sure they were equal distance away from the garage wall and enough distance away from my lumber rack and my garage track on the other side, I tacked the first one on with my nail gun. Now, don't worry, we will secure these in just a second. That's a nice thing about having an unfinished garage though, is I can see right where the studs are without even having to use a stud finder. Then I used the reference board that I cut earlier to make marks where the other runner should go, and I attached the other runner. After that, I slid an empty tote to test the fit and open the garage to make sure the garage cleared. So obviously that didn't go as planned. I measured for about an inch and a half of clearance but I didn't account for the top lip of the garage and the sweeping motion it has as it goes up and around the curve of the track. Luckily Lowe's has a smaller version of these totes that I went and purchased to use at the front of the garage where the lip of the garage door needs a little bit more room to clear. Then I can still use the bigger ones towards the back of the garage. But even with my calculations we were off a bit because I only have about a fourth of an inch of clearance. This is the reason that I attached them with brad nails first. I wanted to test it out and make sure it cleared before I made it permanent. I'm glad I found a solution because I really did not want to rebuild these runners. After adjusting the first two runners and relocating some shop lights I could finally move on to the next runner. I used the same process. I used the spacer to mark where the runner needed to go, then attached it using brad nails. I tested out one of the large totes and would you know it fit perfectly. Then I followed that process with the last two runners off camera. 
Then it was time to secure them to the wall permanently. Oh, well, not permanently, but you know what I mean, so they wouldn't fall down. I did this by drilling at an angle some self-countering screws from each side into each stud. A total of 8 screws per runner, and each screw has a weight limit of 30 pounds comfortably. That means each runner can hold about 240 pounds. The runners will be sharing the load of the bin with another runner as well, so these should hold just fine. In fact, you can see I can hang by one with no fear that it will fall, and I weigh much more than these totes will ever weigh. Now that I got that all done, I filled the bins with some of the stuff that will go in them like Christmas decorations. A few of them will go for various holiday decorations, a few will be for camping gear, and the rest will be empty until we decide what we want to put in them. These bins are super durable and they hold their shape really well. There's no sagging even with a lot of weight in them. That's really nice because as I mentioned, I don't have a whole lot of room between the garage and the bin when the garage door is opened. Here's a view of the 1 4th of inch clearance space I have. I'm super, super lucky. With them hung, we can finally say this project is finished. I'm super excited to have more storage space. We really badly needed it. Thanks again for watching.